الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان والسماء رفعها ووضع الميزان ألا تطغوا في الميزان وأقيموا الوزن بالقسط ولا تخسروا الميزان والأرض وضعها للأنام فيها فاكهة والنخل ذات الأكمام والحب ذو العصف والريحان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان خلق الإنسان من صلصال كالفخار وخلق الجان من مارج من نار فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان رب المشرقين ورب المغربين فبأي آلاء رب بكما تكذبان مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يخرج منهما اللؤلؤ والمرجان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان وله الجبار المنشآت في البحر كالأعلام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يسأله من في السماوات والأرض كل يوم هو في شأن فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان سنفرق لكم أيها الثقلان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يا معشر الجن والإنس إن استطعتم أن تنفذوا من أخ طار السماوات والأرض فانفذوا لا تنفذون إلا بسلطان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يرسل عليكما شواز من نار ونحاس فلا تنتصران فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان صدق الله العظيم ترجمة شروع اللہ کے نام سے جو بڑا مہربان اور نہایت رحم کرنے والا ہے نہایت مہربان خدا نے اس قرآن کی تعلیم دی 
उसी ने इंसान को पैदा किया और उसे बोलना सिखाया सूरज और चांद एक हिसाब के पाबंद हैं और तारे और दरख्त सब सजदा रेज हैं आसमान को उसने बुलंद किया और मीजान कायम कर दी इसका तकाजा यह है कि तुम मीजान में खलल ना डालो इंसाफ के साथ ठीक ठीक टोलो और तराजू में डंडी ना मारो जमीन को उसने सब मखलूक के लिए बनाया इसमें हर तरह के बकसरत लजीज फल हैं खजूर के दरख्त हैं जिनके फल गिलाफों में लिपटे हुए हैं और तरह तरह के गल्ले जिनमें भूसा भी है और दाना भी बस ए जिनो इंस तुम अपनी रब की किन किन नेमतों को झुटलाओगे इंसान को उसने ठेकरी जैसे सूखे सड़े गारे से बनाया और जिनको आग की लपेट से पैदा किया बस ए जिनो इंस तुम अपनी रब की किन किन नेमतों को झुटलाओगे दोनों मशरक और दोनों मगरब सभी का मालिक परवर दिगार वही है बस ए जिनो इंस तुम अपने रब की किन किन नेमतों को झुटलाओगे दो समंदरों को उसने उसने छोड़ दिया कि बाहम मिल जाए फिर भी उनके दरमियान एक पर्दा हायल है जिससे वो तजावज नहीं करते बस ए जिनो इंस तुम अपने रब की किन किन नेमतों को झुटलाओगे इन समंदरों से मोती और मूंगे निकलते हैं बस ए जिनो इंस तुम अपने रब की किन किन नेमतों को झुटलाओगे और ये जहाज उसी के और ये जहाज उसी के हैं जो समंदर में पहाड़ों की तरह ऊंचे उठे हुए हैं बस ए जिनो इंस तुम अपने रब की किन किन नेमतों को झुटलाओगे हर चीज को उस जमीन पर है फना हो जाने वाली है और सिर्फ तेरे रब की जलील करीम जात ही बाकी रहने वाली है बस ए जिनो इंस तुम अपने रब की किन किन नेमतों को झुटलाओगे जमीन और आसमानों में जो भी है सब अपनी हाजतें उसी से मांग रहे हैं हर आन वो नई शान में है बस ए जिनो इंस तुम अपने रब की किन किन नेमतों को झुटलाओगे ए जमीन के बोझों अन करीब हम तुमसे बास पुर्स करने के लिए फारिग हुए जाते हैं तुम अपने रब की किन किन नेमतों को झुटलाओगे एक ग्रो जिनो इंस अगर तुम जमीन और आसमानों की सरहदों से निकलकर भाग सकते हो तो भाग देखो नहीं भाग सकते इसके लिए बड़ा जोर चाहिए तुम अपने रब की किन किन नेमतों को झुटलाओगे तुम पर अगर तुम पर आग का शोला और धुआं छोड़ दिया जाएगा जिसका तुम मुकाबला ना कर सकोगे ए जिनो इंस तुम अपने रब की किन किन ने मतों को जुटलाओगे सदक अल्लाह I request you all to please stand up for national anthem, followed by the outro anthem. Yeah. 
Before I get started, I would like to invite Sir Esgar Hassan on this stage, Principal Medical Physicist from Department of Radiation Oncology to give his welcome speech. Assalamualaikum. <clears throat> Good morning to everyone present here. My name is Azmal Hussain. I am working as special medical physicist in Jaudin Hospital since 2000. I am extremely or harmed to address you all on this event of Fort Medical Physics Workshop of Department of Radiation Oncology in Jaudin Hospital. So this kind of event implies from different organizations interact with each other and share their knowledge, failures, and success, and try to learn from each other. We all here assembled here today to motivate and cherish all the medical physicists community and especially the young mind present among us, because students are the future of tomorrow. It is not only shows your interest, but also your dedication to learning new things Next, I would like to welcome all the professionals and students present here from different universities, organizations, and the employees who have been working in the Audin Hospital present here. And I want to thank you, my, my team, and from the organizing such a great event. Before I further continue with the event, I would like to welcome our chief guest, Dr. Mansoor Nafi, Assistant Professor. He has more than 20 years experience with the Department of Radiology and Nuclear Medicine at Aachen University. His core responsibility include teaching of radiation and medical physics, quality assurance in radiology, nuclear medicine, fat study, cyclotron and radiotherapy. Research, scientific assessment of imaging, equipment and in institution wide radio safety. Please, sir, come on stage and share a few then with us. Thank you very much for this uh, kind honor. I'm really pleased and thankful to the University. And thank this event and such events all over the country and Karachi are very much helpful to connect the professionals together and share the ex their experiences. Our community of medical physicists is very small. So the events, even a very small one, should be counted a bigger. So this is in fact very, very important to continue because very few chances are available. We are continuously organizing some 
programs from BOMP platform and other organizations. And this year we are planning to have a conference in November at the Medical Physics Day at Afghan University. Initial work has already started and within a month time, inshallah ta'ala, you will, we will share some details about that event. And I encourage every one of you to participate in it. So thank you very much again for giving me the honor and thanks. As it is said, prepare and prevent. Don't prepare and repair. I would like to, I would request Mr. Mishkat Ali Jafri from PNRA to please come up on the stage and tell us about the introduction and current activities of Pakistan Organization of Medical Physicists. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Mishkat Ali Jafri. I am currently working as a principal scientific officer in the Pakistan Nuclear Regulatory Authority. My uh, basic uh, job responsibilities include the supervision and uh, uh, conduct of regulatory affairs which are related to the medical centers like uh, radiotherapy facilities, nuclear medicine, radiology, and also the industrial facilities. And we also control uh, import and export of radioactive material and radiation generator in Sindh and Balochistan. So first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, the Audin team. Uh, my friends, uh, Azgar Saab, Arsha Saab, uh, Ms. Hira, Ms. Zainab, and also the chief guest uh, who supported me for the preparation of uh, this presentation. And they say that they are the of our UMP. In every uh, segment of our event, he is also present and always present. So my presentation is basically composed of two parts because I consider that because I consider that uh, there will be many students attending this uh, seminar. Uh, so I will briefly discuss something about the fundamentals of medical physics and then the activities of uh, BOMP, which is uh, the Pakistan Organization of uh, Medical Physicists. Medical physics, uh, physics is a distinct uh, profession. It is separate from biomedical engineering or medical uh, oncology, radiation oncology, or technology. So we will see how this is a separate uh, profession, and then we will see a uh, few activities and progress of uh, POMP in Pakistan in recent times and uh, since the start of this organization. So medical physics is a branch of physics in which we apply a principle of physics in medicine and predominantly in a diagnostic radiology like CT scan uh, or MRI uh, or ultrasound and radiation oncology like Linux, uh, gamma knife, cyber knife, etc. In nuclear medicine, where we use unsealed radioactive sources uh, for determination of various diseases within human body and radiation protection, which is also called the health physics and laser safety also, which is an emerging part of medical physics nowadays. So this is the medical physics basic definition. Now, I, I will spend a uh, few minutes on this slide. This is a very important slide which says that medical physics profession is a separate profession and it is classified and recognized by the highest authority in, in the world. You see that uh, International Labor Organization, it sets the definition of various professions and it has included the definition of medical physics under the definition of physicists and astronomers. 
so medical physics is recognized do we have a pointer no, okay it's okay do we have a pointer right it's okay so International Labour Organization is an official organization which is a part of the United Nations and uh, it has included the definition of medical physics. Okay, it has included the definition of medical in its manual, which is an uh, official manual. And now medical physics is uh, considered as a separate profession for physics and astronomer, and it has also included in the definition of health professionals. And uh, this definition is very long, but I will briefly describe a few things, few important things, like its uh, basic responsibilities include ensuring safe and effective use uh, of radiation and ensuring accurate measurement, uh, the testing and commissioning and quality assurance of the equipment and the consultation with other part of the medical community. And you can see that a very uh, uh, huge responsibility lies on the shoulders of medical physicists as far as the correct, uh, correct delivery of dose is concerned, apart from the role of doctors and the technologies, uh, technologists, medical physicists also have prime responsibility for ensuring patient protection in diagnostic radiology and uh, in uh, radiotherapy as well. So, so this profession is uh, uh, governed and controlled by the international organization. I have mentioned the name of international labor organization. The IAEA International Atomic Energy Agency, which sets the rules, regulation, and standards for radiation protection, it has addressed the profession of medical physics in great detail. Its various requirements, guidance documents, and technical documents has the information and the requirements about the medical physics profession, how it should be done in a country. And there are several professional organizations which follow these requirements of the IAEA uh, for the development of medical physics profession throughout the world, uh, like International Organization of Medical Physicists. And in uh, Asia, we have uh, AFOMP. And this third thing, which is called certification body, which is used uh, to uh, improve the com competency of medical physicists. And at international scenario, we have ICBMP, which is International Certification Board of Medical Physicists. In, in, within a country, how do we regulate this uh, profession? We have a medical physics profession, and I will compare Pakistan with the example of United States. In Pakistan, the regulating body for medical physics profession is PNR, Pakistan Nuclear Regulatory Authority. In USA, it is USNRC, United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission. The professional body in Pakistan is POMP. In USA, this is AAPM. Uh, in Pakistan, we don't have any certification body, but in US, we have, for example, ABR. In Pakistan, we have uh, only one university which is offering medical physics graduate program, that is PIAS, which is situated in Islamabad. And, and uh, uh, in USA, there are many universities and their academic program is also recognized by the uh, AAPM or other professional bodies. So in Pakistan, the medical physics profession started with the start of first radiotherapy center, which, is, which was established at Lahore in 1958. Uh, as far as the educational program uh, is concerned, first medical student program, and it is uh, still the only one in Pakistan, it started in 2001 in Islamabad. And medical physics qualification and its regulation is available in uh, PNR regulation PAG 904. Hello, hello, sir Mishkat, we cannot, your slides are not moving. Uh, we can see the first one me. only. Rahim, you are saying something to me? It is a common problem for all of us, sir. Yes, probably because the slides you selected is not the presentation view, it's the presentation. So you may just uh, stop the screen share and share the entire screen.
So I think just go to Zoom, stop the screen share and and share the entire screen again. Right. Sorry for the disturbance. Uh, I will try to uh, cover this uh, presentation as soon as possible. So Dr. Shirley Hussain was uh, our mentor. Many people uh, know about him. Uh, he actually started this activity. He started to gather uh, all medical research which were available in Karachi at that time. In 2009 and 10 days, he started uh, to develop a group, a working group, and uh, started to uh, set an organization which was uh, called PUNP Pakistan Organization of Medical Physicists. And that uh, group of medical physicists with the name of PUNP, sometimes and sometimes not, started to take part in various activities and conferences in various uh, universities. So uh, the first major event which I remember uh, was the international conference at the University of Karachi, Karachi in 2008, in which medical physicists from USA participated, and that was a mega event. Then uh, we used to have regular meetings in Karachi after 2008, 2009, and onward. And I remember that uh, a medical physician, Noman Bhai, which is our senior colleague who is not present here at the moment, he visited Islamabad and expressed his views about the PUMP in 2012 in a workshop. And then we also initiated a newsletter, which is called uh, Bumpwise. Uh, it discontinued later on. Uh, but we started at that time. So the vision of uh, POMP is uh, that uh, the POMP is a scientific based and professional discipline uh, encompassing physics principles and application in biology and medicine in Pakistan, of course. And the mission is to advance medical physics in Pakistan by disseminating scientific and technical information, fostering uh, educational and professional development of medical physics. You see that this information sharing and educational activities are the prime role in our vision and mission. So our goal includes many parts, but I have highlighted few items which are related to the dissemination of information and training related areas like fostering communication, uh, scientific and technical information sharing, uh, foster educational and professional development activities, which is uh, uh, this uh, event is an, is an example of this activity. We promote high quality medical, uh, medical facility in Pakistan, try our best, level best. And then we organize and sponsor many, many conferences and events. We also started a, a newsletter which is called POMP5. It is continued later on, but we have reshaped it in our book. So 
इसकी कमी कुछ पूरी तो हुई है दिस इज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ आर न्यूज लेटर फॉर्म फाइव दिस लास्ट एडिशन वॉज इशूड इन टू थाउजेंड एटीन विद अ स्पेशल वन एंड वी ऑल्सो कंडक्टेड अ मेगा इवेंट एट जे पी एम सी इन टू थाउजेंड एटीन इन विच डबल ए पी एम मेंबर्स विजिट पाकिस्तान एंड ट्रेन मेडिकल फिजिक्स कम्युनिटी इन पाकिस्तान दैट वॉज अज इवेंट वेरी मेमोरेबल इवेंट फॉर द मेडिकल फिजिक्स कम्युनिटी बिकॉज वी हैड अ चांस टू लर्न मेनी थिंग्स फ्रॉम दो सीनियर मेडिकल फिजिक्स who are working with the advanced technologies in us and canada it was hosted by the jpmc team then we started to celebrate the international day of medical physics the first event was celebrated at ncci karachi as a foundation event and then first formal event was organized at abbottabad uh, mubashir our friend organized that uh, event with the help of his team then the our team team arranged a mega event in 2019 at the clifton campus uh what do you call that campus uh, shri uh, jena colony ke paas hai then uh, uh, kiran hospital arranged uh, uh, another medical physics day in 2020 in 2021 last year we had a, an event at jpmc and this year inshallah we will have another event at aku these are few photos of the previous events this is the outdeen hospital and this is given hospital because of the covid we have uh, seating restrictions over here we also have we also have many activities uh, throughout the day uh, throughout the year for medical physics we have a very interactive uh, whatsapp group uh, for medical physics we arrange uh, so many conferences workshops small courses short courses specialized courses uh, under the uh, name of uh, umt and we also have a very specialized uh, group which is emerging uh, uh, from the uh, umt which is mptp many people know about it it is offering specialized lectures and training sessions for the students and the professionals and we also have a very good service which academy acknowledges very well that we arrange uh, student thesis and internship for many students Uh, for the university of karachi and nad university uh, throughout the year we have participated in many uh, international organizations uh, international conferences like uh, which were uh, arranged by the bseo and radiological society of pakistan pakistan society of nuclear medicine and other universities like uh, pias university of karachi and nad university of engineering and technology so medical phys uh, is the branch which is covered by medicine and the applied and basic sciences as well right this is the last uh, slide of my presentation that medical physics is a fascinating discipline when you study it you re uh, really understand its uh, beauty and the scope of research professional development training etc are enormous in pakistan because we have state of art uh, technologies but we still don't have a proper educational or systematic training program Uh, PUMP is a dynamic community and uh, heading forward uh, with its uh, mission and vision. And its students are encouraged encouraged to study this specialized and professional area because it is different from teaching or quality assurance in uh, other industrial area. And this is a specialized area. Right. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, and I would like to have any question if you like. Thank you.
you so much for your interesting talk. I feel proud to be a part of this institution where we are taught by great teachers whose teaching goes beyond the classroom. I would like to call one of my teacher, principal medical physicist, Sir Ashad Mahmood, to share his clinical experience with LCR Triple F Linear Accelerator at Ziaudin Hospital. I'm Ashad Mahmood, <coughs> Principal Medical Physicist, and uh, today's uh, topic is uh, Clinical Experience of Halcyon at Ziauddin Hospital. Uh, uh, in this talk, I will uh, explain about the major parts of the Halcyon. So, disclosure, uh, no disclosure is only for the education purpose. Uh, presentation outline is uh, machine installed at uh, Dr. Ziaudin Hospital and uh, clinical experience about the Halcyon, Halcyon different parts and their functions and take on message. The treatment machines from the Chinese Linux to the Halcyon. Uh, in 1997, uh, uh, this department started with the Chinese uh, Linux and Chinese simulations. And at that time, uh, the Chinese physicists are over there, and uh, Chinese uh, medical uh, medical technologists is over there. And then uh, in 1998, Cobalt 60 stalled uh, in this department. And then 2004, Siemens Prius uh, Dual Energy Linux and PDW Phantom purchased at that uh, institute. And in 2014, Intrology stalled and CT simulation installation at that time, and uh, 2018 unique uh, installed single energy. And then in 2021, uh, we have Halcyon. Now Halcyon, Halcyon system gave you the fast and high quality treatment you want and the comfort and the convenience your uh, patients need to win against, fight against the cancer. Clinical, uh, clinical experience about the Halcyon. Uh, first uh, treated pelvis, then swiftly on the other as well, like brain, head and neck, abdomen, breast, prostate, and bladder. It generally use MVCBCT for all of the sites. MVMG is adequate and usable, but look forward to, to the KV. KV is very important for the uh, uh, other, uh, um, uh, like uh, prostate and other uh, modalities. Uh, easy setup uh, because of the delta shift couch, so uh, technology is very happy for that. Uh, walk in, uh, walk out treatment times, fastest time is five minutes, and uh, spine pelvis is 10 minutes, have been able to treat six patients per hour. That's the beauty. Halcyon components uh, view from the rear of the unit. Uh, these are the beam line, collimeter MLCs, power, ring gantry, DMI, beam stopper, and cooling system. The rings and uh, gantry beam line, and now we move the stand. Support for the gantry, support front uh, of the couch, houses the linear motor and magnet for the both, houses system, maintenance system, SF6 and water, all motion is given behind the cover except for the couch. Fairly a shallow pit compared to the standard Linux, uh, 30 centimeter enough room uh, for the Linux had to rotate 180 degree, water sensor in, 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 in case of the flooding. Gantry motion range uh, plus minus 80, 185 from the zero, 12 o'clock. Now components in room, uh, two side panels, 
load uh, and unload and uh, volume control as well and uh, two uh, touch screens of as in room monitors and uh, secondary interface patient uh, and goalless id patient can id themselves as well no pendant except for the service pendant uh, board components uh, uh, stationary cover 1 meter diameter and uh, iso center position is marked uh, all motion except the couch occurs behind the cover uh, allow for the high speed versus the conventional linux components uh, couch uh, igrt carbon fiber longitudinal uh, motion is 165.5 cm range of motion lateral motion range is plus minus 20.9 cm vertical motion is 0 to minus 47.5 5 cm live view camera is mounted at the uh, foot of the uh, couch visible in treatment application machine qa and uh, outer iso center is at laser there is two iso center one is outer iso center and uh, one is inner iso center the outer uh, outer iso center uh, is like lasers with the lasers and 80 cm and but the inner iso center is 100 um, two emergency buttons both side of the couch a uh, beam uh, 6x flattening filter free d max of this beam is 1.3 and um, ptd at 10 uh, cm depth of 100 uh, ssd is 63 symmetry is less than 2% maximum difference between the two points which are equidistant and symmetrical about the cx 800 mu per minute highest available dose rate for this machine for 10 by 10 and 100 SSD at DMAX. Beam line components modulate uh, compact and solid state magnetron provide is a magnetron machine and provide RF to accelerating guide, generate RF, radio frequency microwave, and standing waves uh, accelerator, waveguide RF conduct uh, carries RF to the accelerating guide, accelerator, high voltage pulses are fed to the magnetron and uh, again, simultaneously. MLCs, four banks of MLCs, proximal and distal. Uh, upper one is uh, called proximal and uh, lower is called uh, distal. Offset is uh, about the five millimeter offset uh, from the proximal. And integrating uh, leaves and uh, 77 millimeter, millimeter is tall, uh, 234 millimeter radius of curvature of leaves and uh, DLG is near zero. Uh, average leaf transmission is 0.01% uh, through both banks, proximal and distal. Velocity uh, of this MLC is 5 centimeters uh, per second, 14 centimeters to travel. Uh, no need uh, for the lead uh, carriage, 43 seconds to initialize, no light beam, no carriages. MLCs leave and view. All view of followed beam divergence, proximal bank is 29 leaves per bank, and distal bank is 28 leaves plus two outboard uh, leaves, 114 uh, shaping leaves plus the two outboard leaves on the distal bank only. There are two uh, collimeters uh, for very large field. The corners of the field get clipped at an angle other than the three cardinal are uh, 090 and 270. DMI digital mega voltage imager always in the beam path mounted on the beam stopper move with the gantry ring 43 by 43 2D imaging setup fields portal uh, it is used for the uh, setup fields and portal dosimetry 3D imaging uh, for MVCVCT and the distance of this uh, source to imager distance is 154 centimeter beam stopper always in the beam path Bore collision sensor, uh, bore collision sensor front side, entire gantry cover is uh, spring mounted, board is physically locked into the front gantry cover, two sensors detected any deflections. Couch collision uh, panel at rear couch, uh, if uh, it's something in the, uh, uh, down at the couch, uh, then it will uh, stop. Missing components versus true beam. No steering coil, no bending magnet, no feed light, no beam line, eye accessories, dark wedges and compensators. 
Alcyon commissioning is a uh, uh, challenging because uh, beam data is pre-stored and fully modeled in Eclipse. So very happy, uh, physicists very happy, but uh, very big questions for that. So uh, we uh, calculate, we have to uh, calculate all the data as uh, compared to the other Linux as well. So no XML files you have to export from Alcyon to Eclipse and area. Beam conference, uh, you won't be able to beam match this uh, 6F triple F for a true beam or Selenic, no bending magnet, different beam spectrum. Not all 6X triple F beams are created equal. It's a very important slide for the um, uh, all of them because uh, uh, D max of the Alcyon 6X is triple F is 1.3 cm. And true beam 6x triple F uh, is 1.5, and true beam 6x flattening filter is 1.6. The PDD at 10 cm is 63 for the Alcyon, and uh, true beam 6x triple F is 64.3, and uh, uh, true beam 6x 67.2. Maximum dosage is 800, and uh, true beam for 1400, and uh, true beam 6x flat. These uh, uh, these uh, data is. Uh, uh, acquired from the uh, various sites. Alcyon treatment techniques, uh, CT simulation, first CT simulation, eclipse, and then import the, and controlling, add a new plan. Uh, and the new thing is uh, declare, you have to declare the imaging, MVCPCT or MVC, MVMV, imaging field created automatically, DRRs uh, are produced at the console, 2D or 3D. Uh, scheduling all automatic for the treatment imaging field. At Halcyon, uh, line up the patient to the outer laser, load them into the bore, uh, treated, uh, I, uh, treatment ISO, daily IGRT per plan, single beam on, all fields are automatically automated, single beam. Uh, phantom setup. Uh, these are the uh, pictures which I get when we are uh, taking the, at the time of commissioning because uh, it is already uh, commissioned, but uh, very uh, uh, important is the size of the uh, phantom. If you have a big size, then uh, there is a problem uh, to place this uh, into the um, uh, Halcyon board. So uh, we have, a, uh, uh, we have a, uh, this phantom is easily uh, into the uh, board fixed. So align to the laser, no light, field light, ODI uh, load into the board, need to measure for the align and set up verification. You can override this step in a QA modes. So uh, for the QA, uh, you have to imaging a, a, a CT and then you can plan this uh, at uh, the uh, at machine as well. Absolute dose uh, calibration, that's why, uh, that, that's the thing I'm talking about this. Uh, absolute dose calibration is very easy uh, in uh, in service mode. Go to in service mode and intermediate user beam tuning dose uh, dialog and dose calibration. When you uh, when you uh, measure the dose, you have to uh, just put the uh, value you are get, and then uh, from this uh, you will get the uh, calibrated value. And uh, no, uh, we, you have to uh, tune the uh, end user uh, for this. Machine performance check, MPC is mandatory for the uh, uh, morning checks. So uh, image-based analysis acquire a complex series of images, uh, testing key Linux components using a variety of the beam angles, Gantry angles, collimator angles, MLC patterns, couch positions. Many images are acquired through the drum uh, base. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, these are uh, designed to assess the Linux performance over a clinically meaningful range, designed to fail when the problem are encountered. Um, if MPC fail, uh, no treatment. MPC overview runs in approximately four minutes, a design for the therapist to run daily prior to the patient treatment, uh, does not replace QA. That's the main thing. Also must pass MPC 
prior to treatment uh, treating any patient for the for the day, for the day if 12 am then you have to perform again an mpc uh, for the treatment take home message a consistent simple workflow setup image shape treat fast workflow no apps to apply or retract up to 4 rpm gantry speed uh, reduce physics qa uh, many of the tg142 uh, test required uh, requirements are not applicable to the Halcyon uh, machine performance check. Check overall system integrity may reduce frequency of the manual QA process. Uh, processes MPC does not replace QA. Water pen comes size before purchasing this unit. It's a very important thing. Thank you very much. Any question? Uh, for uh, for the QA, you are talking about the QA. Yes. MPC uh, MPC did all the things for the Delta Couch as well. MPC. It's a uh, mandatory for that uh, uh, machine QA. Yes. Any question? Eight hundred. No, no, it's fixed eight hundred. No, it's for the true beam. It's for the true beam. No. 800 fixed dose rate hai ke jo aap pe kar most of the time it happens during our job ye jo hai to continue be on hoti hai to very is pe aisa nahi is pe aisa nahi ye jo couch hai iska ye exa port hai ha exa port matlab ye six direction iski motion hai nahi nahi no six direction motion aur emergency mein se bahar push kar sakte ji ji Thank you. Thank you, sir, for sharing your experience with us. Before I further continue, we will uh, we will move towards the tea session. Tea will be served on terrace. Please move.
Now we will continue our session with another presenter. I would like to call uh, Mr. Manoj Kumar, medical physicist from NCCI, to give his presentation on a brief introduction of double AMPN TG198 and prepare a report on implementation guide for TG142 quality assurance of medical accelerators. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Manoj Kumar, and I'm a medical physicist working at the NCCI Hospital. Uh, I complete my graduation in physics from Karachi University. Uh, after completing my graduation, I was inducted as a trainee medical physicist in the Aga Khan uh, University Hospital, uh, who runs two year certificate uh, trainee medical physics program, uh, where we were doing hands on training and uh, were also taught didactic courses uh, related to the field. Uh, after completing the certification, uh, I was uh, appointed there in Aga Khan as a, a medical physicist and I served further there for two years as an on job employee. And then I switched to NCI hospital where I'm currently working as a medical physicist for the last two years. <clears throat> okay, uh, today I am presenting a, a report of quality assurance that is related to medical linear accelerators. Uh, I'll start uh, with some basics because students are also here. Uh, so the word brief is here, brief word is not uh, present in the report. Uh, because there's a very lengthy report of uh, almost 60 pages and it cannot be covered in a single session. <clears throat> uh, okay, so when we buy a new machine or equipment uh, that is a linear accelerator or simulator or TPS, uh, it has some specs, specification, and we need to maintain those specifications uh, so that it can be efficiently run at its 100% or within its tolerance. Uh, so in order to find that whether it's uh, working in its uh, uh, at its specs, we need to do some tests. Those tests are called quality control tests. Now, these quality control tests are for many different parts, and all of these quality control tests uh, combine to form a quality assurance program. Quality assurance for different uh, different uh, parts. Okay. Uh, now we need to uh, we need to have some baseline values and reference values uh, so that we can compare the test uh, with them. And these values, the reference values and baseline values, come from standard bodies. And these standard bodies are AAPM, American Association of Physicists and Medicines, and IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency. Uh, they be, they do big cl clinical trials and uh, via research and education publishes different reports. Uh, uh, and give us guidelines so that uh, we can uh, follow them. And we and all over the world, these reports are followed. Okay, so this is uh, one of the report from AAPM uh, task group 198. Uh, this is basically updated version of TG142. TG142 is uh, the pr previous report for TG198. Uh, and uh, the title of TG142 was Quality Assurance of Medical Linear Accelerators. Okay, as I said, WPM is a standard body. So we can uh, read the last four lines that uh, WPM supports the medical physics community with a focus 
on advancing patient care through education, improving safety, efficacy of radiation oncology and medical imaging procedures through research and the maintenance of professional standards. Okay, history of TG reports. It's not a new report, but uh, the reports on quality assurance of medical accelerators has been published uh, in past. So TG40 was uh, the first report published in 1994, and it contains almost all the quality control or quality assurance tests uh, for the medical linear accelerators. Uh, but with the evolution in the technology and different techniques comes, TG142 was published in 2009. And in this, the complete tests were there of TG40, but uh, the table two was updated because uh, after TG40, uh, asymmetric jaws, MLCs, uh, modulation was uh, came into existence and they had to incorporate in a new report. So TG142 uh, came. Now, uh, most of the centers, uh, uh, all the centers in Pakistan and all over the world, they are following this report and uh, still uh, not uh, all the uh, centers knows about TG198 as it was just published the last year in 2021 and it's not implemented everywhere. So TG198 is basically the updated version and uh, it has new add-ins. That is, it contains all the quality assurance, quality control test of TG142, uh, but uh, it has new add-ins. So I'll be highlighting just those add-ins uh, in TG1 uh, in this presentation. Okay, uh, this report focuses on CM type Linux. Uh, we have different Linux CM types like uh, uh, DHX, DBX, TrueBeam, Trilogy. These are CM type Linux, and other Linux are ring uh, ring based like Halcyon and tomotherapy, robotic arm type. So they are not applicable. This report is not applicable in th uh, those Linux for those Linux, uh, but they're saying how, however many recommendations are directly applicable to uh, these uh, Linux. This TG has endeavored to align with previous uh, published reports, especially medical physics practice guidelines, 2A, 8A, and other reports as well. Uh, basically, the question arises that uh, if TG142 is uh, there and uh, TG198 has almost all the tests of TG142, so what is the need of this? So basically, TG142 contains the tolerances, limits, and uh, quality control tests, but it does not provide us the procedural guidelines that how to perform those tests and uh, many other things uh, which comes after TG142 uh, via different research <clears throat> so those research are uh, updated in this single document. Okay, the goal of QA program is to ensure that machine characteristics do not deviate sig significantly from the baseline values. As I said that uh, the machine has to be in its 100% uh, when it was installed. So the goal is uh, this, that uh, we do not want it to deviate from its uh, installed values. The underlying principle behind these TG reports was the ICRU recommendations that those delivered be in 5%. This is the basic principle for which we are doing all these Q procedures. Although TG142 is a detailed comprehensive report that covers the recommendations of Linux QA in detail, an implementation guide is needed to ensure appropriate implementation in routine clinical settings. As I said, that TG142 it contains all the tests, but uh, there is no implementation guide that how to perform those tests and what accessories, what equipments are needed. So there are several publications that recommend different aspects of QA test of TG142, but the community would be better served by integrating all these guidelines in one updated document. Uh, as I said, that uh, there are different uh, uh, work, uh, different literature, uh, different articles uh, published on different topics like uh, MLCs for MLC control tests and others. So all those research, all those articles and uh, different reports like TG-179, TG-76 related to the IGRT and uh, <clears throat> protocols of respiratory gating, they are aligned in this report. Okay, now new add-ins provides procedural guidelines for performing the tests recommended in TG142. It was not, uh, not there in TG142 that how to perform the uh, quality control test and what equipment accessories are needed to perform those tests. So this is one of the new thing in uh, TG198 that it gives us procedural guideline. Uh, we'll, so, uh, we'll see uh, one or two examples uh, uh, ahead in the presentation that uh, how it is given in this TG198 report. 
change in few tolerance and limits of QA test. Uh, few tolerances and limits are revised for different tests. Provides estimate of range of time, appropriate personal qualification and resources necessary to complete the test. Uh, so range of time was not, uh, it, uh, it was not talk about range of time in the previous report that uh, for different quality tests, uh, we need to complete within certain minutes or certain hours. So this uh, report talks about the estimate of range of time. Appropriate personnel who should do the daily QA test, the monthly test, the annual test. Who are the appropriate personnel for doing those tests? Uh, qualification and resources. Sample QA forms for daily, weekly, monthly, and annual. They are given in this report. VMAT QA is added in TG198 report. It was not the part of TG142 because uh, VMAT was uh, just uh, came at that time when this report was published, TG142. So there was not uh, enough literature to incorporate VMAT QA at that time. So VMAT QA is added in this report. The recommendations are not intended to be used as regulation. Uh, this paragraph is written in almost all the reports that uh, these are recommendations. They are not regulations. You can change the report. This is customizable. So it depends on the institutional uh, needs that what sites they are treated and uh, uh, as per their institutional uh, uh, needs. So these reports are customizable. Uh, this TG replaces all X-rays with photons. In previous reports, uh, the word X-rays were used, that X-rays output constancy, X-rays uh, were used everywhere. So and now in this report, they, are, they have replaced X-ray with photon. And in gating section, the amplitude is replaced with displacement to align with TG76. Okay, change in tolerance. In daily and weekly test, uh, the changes in tolerance are the test for positioning and repositioning of imaging and treatment coordinates uh, for SRS SBRT machine, it's increased from one mm to two mm. And uh, with the exception, when SRS treatment is done, so on the day of SRS treatment, where you are using IGRT uh, with SRS treatment. So at the day of SRS treatment, the QMP uh, is liable to validate that uh, uh, the tolerance should be one mm on the day of SRS treatment. Otherwise for imaging for QA purpose is 2mm. So QMP should review and sign of daily QA test, preferably daily minimum once a week. The daily QA test uh, is to be done by RTT, radiation therapy technologist, but uh, the physicist uh, needs to review it at least once a week and sign of them. The sign is important, it recommends. Okay, uh, the changes and limits uh, in monthly test. So tolerance for radiation, light radiation coincidence for both symmetric, asymmetric field was changed to 2 mm per joule. And this uh, change is made to align with MPPG 8A, that is Medical Physics Practice Guideline 8A. It was uh, changed to 2 mm from 1 mm because uh, most of the treatment now, they are uh, IMRT or IGRT or SRS. So we don't need field light now. Field light was needed in 2D treatment or 3D treatment uh, we were where we were opening uh, X1, X2, and Y1, Y2 jaws. So that's why the limit is uh, increased. Okay, tolerance for jaw position indicator was changed to 2 mm per jaw for symmetric mode. And for asymmetric mode, it is 1 mm per jaw to align with MPPG again. So it is also revised. Uh, in monthly QA test, VMAT is added. That is, you need to perform at least one VMAT uh, test patient specific uh, uh, monthly. Uh, okay, for monthly QA, QMP should review and sign off on the reports within 15 days of completion. That is when the QA is performed. So within 15 days, the physicist need to review it and sign off them. So that if there are uh, any changes or uh, actions to be uh, checked, uh, it is done as soon as possible. Okay, this is one of the example I was saying that uh, uh, the procedural guideline given. So it is... Uh, uh, give, uh, it is a jaw position indicator test where they have completely uh, clarified that what is the objective of this test, what are the tolerances for the test, and what are the equipments and accessories needed to perform this test, and uh, what is the method also. This is another test, VMAT. Uh, again, uh, it's, it's in monthly test and uh, objective is there, tolerance is there and method and equipment is there. The highlighted area says that uh, at least once a month, 
you need to perform a patient specific vmat qa but if you are not doing uh, many plans of vmat you are not uh, running uh, vmat plans uh, if it's rare then you can take it to annual qa that is in annual qa uh, you will perform at least one vmat qa test okay in annual test the changes are mu linearity for photons should be tested for both static and dynamic beams as the beam control system can differ so mu linearity this is a new thing the in the previous report it was recommended that uh, you can, you have to do mu linearity for static fields only but now uh, it is recommended in this that the modulated beam is also checked for mu linearity tpa t set measurements for profiles and energy output constancy is optional is done optional in this uh, they are saying that uh, if the nominal ssd at nominal ssd the, the output and profiles they all are uh, okay then you don't need to do uh, tba output constancy uh, on annual basis the tolerance for radiation and mechanical isocenter was changed to absolute values as opposed to reference from baseline to align with mppg 8a okay now the tolerance for radiation and mechanical isocenter is uh, uh, it's uh, i think it's 2 mm but they are saying it's now absolute values absolute value means you are doing the test you are uh, looking at the test that if it's 2 mm or 1 mm so uh, you will see the tolerance there you will not compare these values with the baseline values or uh, values taken at the time of acceptance or commissioning okay so another test we met q as i said that it is uh, uh, adjusted an annual test we met qa test patient specific qn interrupted test were added one is patient specific we met qa constancy that is the vmat is running continuously but uh, the machine sometimes malfunction and what happens is the beam uh, stopped in between and then again we start the beam and we complete the treatment so in this uh, report they are recommended that uh, uh, do this test once with a continually running the beam and uh in the another test is interruption that uh, stop the beam and again run the beam and complete the test and compare uh, both of the results okay the another is a table top seg uh, we have been uh, done this test uh, the name of this test is uh, reworded to treatment couch top flex this is the new name of a table top seg test treatment couch angle tolerance is changed to align with this treatment couch angle tolerance uh, is the change for non imrt and imrt is plus minus 1 degree and for srs sbrt is plus minus 0.5 degree okay upon completion of annual qa it is recommended that comprehensive annual qa report be generated it's now recommended in this report in tg198 that after you have done with your qa annual qa you need to generate a report qa report the report should contain a summary section stating significant findings based on the recommended values uh so th there should be a summary uh, summary sections uh, in which you will write all those findings and tolerance and out of tolerance values uh so that these report uh, should be signed off and uh, reviewed by the qmp for future use okay so summary and recommendations detailed policy and procedure should be available to every members of departmental qa team as i said that uh, these are not qmp qualified medical faces but are, there are rtg rtgs also who need to perform the daily qa test so detailed policy and procedure should be there they should be documented so that every person know that uh, how to perform those tests and what are the tolerance limits and all that so establish policy of roles and responsibilities for involved qa personnel recommend appropriate personnel to perform specific qa test guidance and interpretation of frequency and timing of qa program uh, now they have uh, imposed a limitation that daily qa uh, that we have been doing uh, according to tg142 also that daily qa is to be performed by rtd radiation therapy technologists and it is to be done uh, before you take the first patient uh, that we are doing also but it should not be skipped it should be done daily monthly qa should be following calendar's months that is it should it should not skip and it should be done following months and the limitation is imposed that you have to do after 3 weeks or after 5 weeks plus minus 1 week is uh, the imposed uh, uh, limit 
gap between annual qa is 13 months that is after 13 months as passed you need to perform the uh, your scheduled annual qa okay this tj addresses extra time now there are many tests are added in uh, this tj report so we need extra time so uh, this uh, tj recommends and provides a guideline to the on oncology administrator that they need to understand obviously we are doing all these things for patients so we need extra time to perform all these uh, quality assurance so there is a demand of extra time and extra resources we need to perform uh, the qa test the time required for annual qa is estimated to be 40 to 60 hours for multiple energies photon and electrons okay these are the few references i have taken from uh, this tg198 report but there are many in that report uh i have uh, tried to complete all the uh, new addends uh, all the new highlight uh, highlighted all the new points but uh, still i will recommend all of you people to go through this report and implement this report in your clinical setting uh, thank you very much any questions or comments hello manoj uh, this is rahim uh, as such there is no question just a comment it seems like you have very good command on tg198 but i think in our next academic hour we would love to listen the procedural part of the, some of the crucial tests because you have given us a very brief review but we would like to see the procedural part as well if you can uh, sorry uh, i didn't hear you i'm saying in our next academic session if you can okay. present procedural part the various tests recommended by tg192 then it will be helpful for us uh, yes sure but uh, still uh, this cannot be done in a single session so we'll see that uh, it can be done in a series of session because there are many tests in the support thank you so much Thank you. Moving towards the next presentation, I would like to invite Mr. Fazan Ahmed, medical physicist and radiation protection officer from Lyakar National Hospital, to give his presentation on estimation of radiation doses from diagnostic nuclear medicine procedure. वो तो तो वो पूरा ही करेंगे लेकिन हम सेटअप सेम रखना है उसमें ठीक है जो हेड्रेस नीचे रखोगे ऊपर रखोगे लेकिन ऊपर हेड्रेस यही सिर्फ आते हैं तो ऊपर जब लेके जाओ नहीं इसको फ्यूजन करनी होगी ना किसका पेशेंट रखा तो पेनिस का नहीं फ्यूजन करनी होगी तो इसका मास जिस दिन हमारा ये हुआ ना उसी दिन अपने हेड्रेस वहां पे ऊपर हां आ जाना तो उसमें हेड्रेस ये रख लेना ठीक है ठीक है क्योंकि ऊपर हेड्रेस एक के अलावा और कुछ पूरा आता है तो फिर सर कहते हैं कि हम यहां पे नीचे भी डॉक्टर जा सकते हैं हां हां तो फिर सर कहते हैं कि हम यहां पे नीचे भी डॉक्टर जा सकते हैं 
assalamu alaikum to all of you my name is uh, faizan ahmed uh, and i am a medical physicist and radiation protection officer at yagat national hospital uh, karachi and the topic of today's presentation is uh, estimation of the external exposure from the patients which are undergoing nuclear medicine diagnostic tests it is basically a research based uh, project which was performed uh, at our facility and i will be sharing with you the findings uh, of that research so uh, these are the contents for my presentation regarding to the nuclear medicine uh, as we all have some basics uh, related to radiology so i am skipping that part uh, nuclear medicine basically tells us about the physiological imaging that means ke anatomical imaging is not done in it it's basically regarding to the functional imaging the basic procedure for nuclear medicine test is that uh, we inject the nuclear medicine uh, we inject the nuclear medicine in the patient so it's typically the radioactive isotope which is used for as a tracer and this radioactive isotope is usually the technetium technetium why only technetium because it has some uh, characteristics which are very favored in case of diagnostic tests first of all it has short half life and it emits gamma rays and it can be labeled with many other pharmaceuticals it's typically its uh, average energy is 140.5 kev or you can say 140 kev so regarding to our research that after the injection injection to the patient that means that radioactive medicine has been administered to the patient what will be the dose rates outside the patient because whenever we inject it to the patient the patient becomes the radioactive source so how much will be the dose rates surrounding the patient how much will be the dose rate at the surface of the patient and can we estimate some dose rates for the future means for the future time after one hour after two hours so that the accompany people that means that staff coming with the patient or the other attendants coming with doses so how much doses they will get we want to inquire it uh, in this research so the methodology we have taken here is that we have taken the readings the dose rates in two circumstances number one is those rates from an unshielded technetium 99m source only the source not the patient and then the dose rates were taken from the radio pharmaceutical injected patient that means now patient is the source of radiation and by these readings we have made an empirical model regarding to all the settings all the uh, injected activities we have performed in this in this research so the experimental setup for the measurement of the unshielded technetium 99m source the dose rates were taken by using two survey meters uh, just like this there is a radioactive source in the center and at some distances we have taken the readings by two survey meters both of the survey meters have these specifications as you can see it here both are compatible with the energy of this technetium 99m source we have taken the many distances we have taken the readings at many distances from zero that means at the surface to almost 2 meter that is 200 cm and related to the activity we have taken it from 5 mci sorry we have taken it from the 0.173 mci 0.5 and up to so on gone to 53.177 these numbers are arbitrary but all the mcis are related with the diagnostic tests the usually used diagnostic uh, mcis are in this readings now regarding to the patient we have taken the readings from the patients as well for some diagnostic tests that is myocardial perfusion imaging whole body scanning renal scanning thyroid and other tests some other tests as well so for taking the reading for the case of surface at the surface of the patient we have given the uh, osld the dosimeter to the patient 
the properties of osld or the specs of osld are written here it's uh, made of aluminium oxide it is typically employed in uh, almost medical centers for the for the dosimetry of the workers and furthermore we have taken some readings away from the patient as well at two distances 60 cm and at 100 cm these readings were also taken from that two uh, survey meters which i have shown you earlier now uh, regarding to those who work in the nuclear medicine they must be familiar uh, with these doses typically these are the radioactive doses or you can say the radioactive medicine activity injected to the patient in these tests which we have performed uh, during this study these are the number of patients or number of samples which we have taken the data and also we had done one more thing that is usually the radioactive model the radioactive source model is taken to be the point source model and patient is not a point right patient is a kind of line so we have taken these models into account as well this is the equation for a uh, point source model and this will be the equation for line source model so we have taken the values that those rates were also calculated by using these two models as well these are the equations you can see at some later time these are uh, present in many reports as well so as assumption was performed here that means the patient is a radioactive source but it is a kind of shielded source it will have those rates uh, as compared to the unshielded source it will have those rates lower than that and we have taken these readings as well and compared it with the technetium 99m source which was unshielded and attenuation factors were calculated by using these values for the attenuation factors we have simply uh, performed this division that is the dose rates at patient surface divided by the dose rate at that source surface similarly at the given distances we have taken the dose rates in this ratios and have we have we have that attenuation factor so this enabled us to make the empirical model that means related to the dose rates and the distances we have made a model we already had the model for unshielded technetium sources but we do not have the model for the patient so we have implied these attenuation factors into our model to make it for the patient as well and for that reason we have used bilinear interpolation because we have two axes you can say we have two axes one is the mci that is the dose rate that is the doses activity and the other one is the distance and related to the patient when it comes for the patient we have taken the attenuation factors we have multiplied the attenuation factor for the reading for the dose rates outcome of the injected patient so what were the results the results are quite similar as compared to the texts for the technetium 99m source these were the results for some activities we have uh, many readings i cannot show all the readings here i am showing only some readings here and these are totally comparable with the dose with the point source model and the line source model as well okay so those who have uh, seen this kinds of graph this is basically inverse square law this is following the inverse square law it is for the unshielded technetium 99m source these are some more readings now related to the patient first of all these all readings are comparable with the line source and the point source model as well and at near the source near the source the readings were more deviating and when we have taken the readings away from the source the readings were quite similar to both for both of the survey meters this is the comparison of dose rates by the survey meters and the line source and point source model and as you can see here as we go away from the source the line source and point source models are really comparable and similarly the dose rates from the survey meters are also comparable near the source we have very much deviations in the dose rates these are some readings for the activities 
Now, regarding to this measurement, the conclusion is that when we are away from the source, when we are away from the source, basically the point and line source model give almost same reading because when we are away from the source, it's not the line, it's the point. But near the source, we have to perform measurements because this is our only source. Now, talking about the patient, what will be happen to the patient or in the case of patient? So for that, we have uh, readings. These are the readings and all the time is spent during that time in the department. These were the doses which were measured by that uh, OSLD, by that dosimeters. So we have uh, calculated the dose rates, the average dose rates from this and compare it with the average dose rates of the survey meter. And as you can see here, survey meters were giving high reading as uh, for the unshielded source. And for the patient, the dose rates are very low because patient is a kind of shielded source. So these are the findings for the uh, readings. As you can see here, larger the activity, larger will be the dose at patient surface. Highest number is 0 0.74 MSV and the activity injected was 27.91. This is for the MPS test. It, uh, it, this test is done in two phases. So readings from the radioactive source gives uh, one information and that is quite possible. That means we have the reading that means K, uh, the activity, high is the activity, higher will be the radiation dose received by the patient. Typically, these are not employed in the clinical setting because the release criteria for technetium 99M found by the NCRP report 155 and US NRC is 760 MCI. And regarding to the 760 MCI, no diagnostic test is performed at this activity. The diagnostic tests are performed for 30 MCI, for 20 MCI. We do not give 760, uh, 760 MCI to any patient for the diagnostic test. So this is not related with the release criteria, but related with the radiation doses uh, outside the patient. So higher the activity injected, higher will be the radiation dose, the cumulative dose of the patient. And obviously the dose rates were very much lower than the patient release criteria. So these are the readings at some distance at 60 centimeter from the patient. And you can compare it here, the point source model and the line source model giving the almost nearly same reading. And for the patient, the readings are much lower. Again, this is implying that the patient is a shielded source. These are the comparisons of the point source model and line source model and the reading which were taken at the patient. Now, one more thing is that the point source model always overestimates the dose rate. Highest reading for the point source model in every graph. Similarly, these were taken at 100 centimeters from the patient and now the readings are much more comparable to the point source and the line source model. Right. As you can see here, the readings are much more compatible because as we go away from the patient, as we go away from the source, it becomes a kind of point source. But point source model always overestimates the readings. So these readings were taken from the patient and patient was considered to be a shielded radiation source and it was found to be the true one. And related to these readings, we have made an empirical model. That means which values I have shown to you, the ratios which I have shown to you, this were employed for the uh, patients. This is our empirical model. It works for that distances which we have taken and the uh, MCIs for which we have taken. We can convert into many units just for the uh, reference. We have put here the values, uh, the screenshots. And these were also implied regarding to the test. Because in each and every test, the distribution of the radioactive source inside the patient is not same. So the dose rates coming outside the patient will not be the same. So some comparisons related to published study previously. You can see here the maximum doses to the companion. In this study, they have given the radiation dosimeters to the companions and companions were with the patient all the time as uh, they have stated in their papers. 
so this were the readings and if similar conditions were employed in our empirical model these were the readings right it's very much near for some cases but too far away but too much deviated for some cases as well this is again for another study and this were the cumulative doses found out for the bone scan and by our model for similar scenarios we have given the readings we were taken the readings and it's quite similar for case of bone scan this is another study as you can see here some readings are quite similar but others too much deviated so what we can conclude with it that means the technetium 99m radiation the technetium 99m source has been injected to the patient and patient becomes a radioactive source this radioactive source obviously gives those rates outside it and it will be received by the companions by all the staff which will be interacting with the patient now the highest doses were found to be the mps test and the lowest doses were found to be for the renal imaging scan published articles to some extent the readings were comparable with uh, our empirical model as well and the point source model which we usually take because of, because of its ease it highly overestimates the dose rates from the patient as well and moreover any of the test did not give this dose rate did not give that dose rate which related with the patient release criteria these were all lower than the patient release criteria and well below the regulatory guidelines as well for the caretakers so furthermore the empirical model and what we have made here empirical model will always be helpful and we can find the dose rates to the companion or the doses cumulative doses to the companion if you put uh, right conditions in that empirical model uh, the studies which were performed earlier they do not give the exact uh, scenario they do not give the exact scenario of their uh, uh, of their diagnostic test so that's why some of the readings were taken as average or some of the reading were taken as a typical reading for like for example here this distance was not given in this study so we have taken it to be 30 to 50 cm around so future work we can make it a more precise study by using uh, other dosimeters Uh, the comparable dosimeter small size dosimeter and we can place it on many uh, areas of the patient if we want to have a more accurate reading but overall the radiation doses were lower from the patient but alara principle is there so many of the centers could benefit from it as they know that how much radiations could be received by the companions or by other staff due to interaction with the patient and that's all for the presentation thanks to all of you any questions hello kesa yes sir um such a nice study but just a quick question any recommendations or any change in your practice in terms of radiation protection for your patients and attendants after such a wonderful study uh, yes sir we have basically employed some rules there uh, that means uh, if i have to say that usually uh, the patient uh, this is a typical practice that no companion are usually uh, with the patient after the radioactive medicine were injected with the patient but we take it on a strict notes as well means we have employed uh, all the basically warning signs warning signs were there but warning related to this as well for the companions although although the readings are not uh, that much high but still there is a chance of some radiation induced things as well so we have taken it into account thank you welcome sir yes can i answer in urdu can i answer in urdu uh, yes um 
जितनी भी यहाँ पर स्टडीज जो मैंने इसमें शो की है जिसमें मैंने कंपेरिजन किया है इसका कोई एक्सेप्ट मैथडोलॉजी नहीं जितनी भी स्टडीज मैंने अपनी स्टडी को करने के लिए और इसको कंपेयर करने के लिए दूसरी स्टडीज से जो लोगों ने क्या किया तो कोई मैथडोलॉजी गिवन नहीं है देर इज नो समीजी गाइडलाइन एन अदर गाइडलाइन सो इट्स टोटली अप टू यू राइट नाउ यू कैन कंसिडर इट अट्रिक सोर्स यू कैन कंसिडर इट अन सोर्स बट वी यूजली डू बट वी यूजली डू वी कंसिडर इट अट सोर्स पॉइंट सोर्स की इक्वेशन सबसे आसान है यू हैव टू पुट द वैल्यूज एंड गेट द आंसर लाइन सोर्स तो भी कोई नहीं जाता सो वी है release criteria is given in nrc 10 cfr it's written here 760 mci and we usually do not give this high much dose in the diagnostic test so related to only the patient release criteria it will not be applicable to the diagnostic test but 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 it's a thing which we have given the radioactive source of the patient so we won't let it go first of all there is a counseling of the patient before starting the test so that's why in that stage this all comes to an end and if patient uh, if patient accepts for the test it will be gone for the test means it will be injected to the patient but not that time after the injection we won't let it go proceeding towards our next presenter Bushra Ithaka medical physicist from SIUT she would be presenting on behalf of Shaukat Ali chief medical physicist from SIUT on active breathing control Assalamualaikum, respected all. I am Bushra Intaka from SIUT Hospital. On behalf of Mr. Shaukat Ali. उसका वो कल ही पता चलेगा अब इक्कीस तारीख को. On behalf of Mr. Shaukat Ali, I am going to present uh, uh, and share our experience of using ABC. So radiation therapy plays an important uh, part in the delivery of. Uh, uh, in the treatment of tumors so one of the big challenge faced during the radiation therapy is the interfraction motion of the tumors and managing the interfraction movement due to the respiration is essential to deliver the prescribed dose accurately to the target volume these are the techniques to overcome the interfraction movement 
the techniques involved is active respiratory gating technique, which is the most common. And this uh, uses uh, or involves the delivery of radiation during a particular phase of respiratory cycle. The other one is deep breathing. During Conference. deep breathing method, the patient Resistant. takes a deep breath before the beam is turned on. And this causes an increase in the distance between the PTV of the left breast and heart, which uh, results in the less dose delivered to the heart, causing less chances of developing radiation-induced cardiac diseases. So ABC is another method used to regulate the respiratory movements, which facilitate the breath hold without requiring uh, the patient to reach the maximum respiratory capacity. ABC device can be utilized to suspend breathing in any predetermined position along regular respiratory cycle. So this is the workflow of ABC. Uh, first coaching uh, will be done and then simulation will be performed. After simulation treatment will be done and a daily patient assessment will be performed. The first step is coaching. Patient is scheduled for coaching. Uh, radiation therapy technologist explains the whole procedure to the patient. And during this session, radiation therapy technologist coaches the patient to perform the breath hold procedure multiple times. When the RTT feels confident, the patient is ready for simulation. He or she will uh, determine how long the patient can hold their breath. Usually, 20 second breath hold is required to perform the treatment with this technique. On the day of simulation, uh, the, the RTT clamps the patient nose to avoid the accidental breathing. A mouthpiece is given to the patient attached to the breathing tube. After adequate air, air inhalation, patient is asked to hold their breath. A small valve in breathing tube closes uh, to prevent air to, perform, uh, to enter patient's lung. This is stop the movement. Uh, if at any time the patient wants to take breath, the patient releases pressure on a switch and a valve automatically opens to inhale. So RTT acquires CT images while using ABC. It provides a clearer image and the edges of the tumor are well defined. On the day of treatment, RTT position the patient following the same protocol as in the simulation. Once the nose clamp and mouthpiece are in place, treatment uh, will be begin. And before given the first radiotherapy fraction, patient underwent for setup verification. After verification, the patient hold their breath and the RTT delivers a radiation beam to the target area. Typically, the deep breath hold procedure is repeated four to six times during each treatment. The whole course of treatment will be delivered with the same procedure. Daily patient assessment will be performed. Observations were made to assess if the patient has difficulties while they are holding their breath, if the patient is experiencing any radiation-related skin burn or irritation. Observations were also made about weakness and weight loss experienced by the patients. So the advantage of ABC is that previously patients of left-sided breast cancer were treated without respiratory gating techniques, which lead to unnecessary dose to the heart and increased chances of radiation-induced heart disease. Uh, with the advancement in this technique now in SIUT radiotherapy department, ABC machine is utilized to treat the patients with left breast cancer. So the patient is counseled by the radiation oncologist at the time of simulation. The radiation technologist guides and helps the patient practice breath hold, uh, breath with, uh, with hold. Uh, known as the trial phase during which the threshold time for breath hold is decided under the supervision of the radiation oncologist. After planning by the radiation physicist, the patient is treated using the same ABC protocol, which was defined uh, during the simulation. So ABC is an advanced and non-invasive procedure which ensures the precise dose delivery to the target volume while minimizing the excess dose to the heart, thus preventing radiation-induced uh, heart diseases. The radiation technologist plays an important role in performing the ABC procedure from simulation to the treatment. Uh, the technologist helps the patient to overcome any difficulties while confirming the proper dose delivery. The radiation uh, technologist requires a special training in performing the ABC procedure. Multiple training sessions were conducted in SIUT in order to ensure the quality treatment. These are the references of this presentation. Thank you. This is a sort of nice presentation. My question was mentioned that we're only treating the patient with the left breast. 
So yes. what about the right side? Actually, uh, this is an initial phase, or abhi hum ye kar rahein ki sirf heart ke liye dekh rahein. Varna isse ye bhi ho sakta hai ki jaise lung jab respiratory movements hoti hain, to lung ki dose bhi isse increase ho sakti hai, matlab decrease ho sakti hai. Lekin abhi jo hamara initial phase hai, iske andar ham left sided breast isliye le rahein kyunki heart jo hai left side pe hota hai. सर यूज कर सकते हैं लेकिन ऑब्वियसली प्रोस्टेट में जो हमारे वॉल्यूम्स होते हैं ऑनकोलॉजिस्ट उसके अंदर मार्जिन इतना दे देते हैं कि वो इतनी ज्यादा मूवमेंट नहीं होती प्रोस्टेट की तो यूज तो खैर कर सकते हैं इसको लेकिन अभी हम इनिशियल फेज में हैं तो अभी जो स्टार्ट किया है वो लेफ्ट साइडेड ब्रेस्ट से ही किया है Actually, अभी जो पर्टिकुलर वैल्यूज हैं या डोजेज हैं Maybe I cannot comment on that. Well, you are very right, but most people say that we can reduce the margin, but practically it doesn't help. What do you? Think? वैसे जो इसकी रिसर्च है वो इनिशियल फेज के अंदर है अभी जो लेफ्ट साइडेड ब्रेस्ट कैंसर है तो इसके लिए जो जो भी रिजल्ट्स होंगे वो ऑब्वियसली शेयर कर दिए जाएंगे हेलो क्वेश्चन यस सर मे बी यूजिंग एनी एक्सटर्नल मार्कर्स to monitor the pattern of the breathing for the patient other than the tube you were mentioning no all right okay do you have any suggestion yeah you can use the external markers as well uh, and then you can focus the cameras and uh, you can monitor the the breathing pattern as well there's the other way of doing it okay any other questions Yes, actually मैं फॉरन बहुत कम नोटिस के ऊपर मैंने प्रेजेंटेशन तैयार की है तो इसलिए मैंने कोई पिक्चर इंक्लूड नहीं की एनी अदर कमेंट Thank you, Mr. Now we have our last speaker of the day, Mr. Zain Ahmed, senior medical physicist from Al Khair University Hospital, who will share his knowledge on the metal hardening region.
Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Sahim Ahmed and I am working as a senior medical visitor at KUH Karachi. My topic is volumetric modulated arc therapy of head and neck cancer. And basically, it is inspired by the Rios Contrast Cancer IMRT 2.0 criterion curriculum. Uh, what is Rios? It will be further discussed. This is my disclosure statement. The overall uh, view of presentation is the auditor bit introduction of Rios Contrast Center and their curriculum. Then a little bit introduction about VMET and its history and the optimized optimization method, which is inspired by that uh, RCC's uh, curriculum. And in the last uh, medical physics transdisciplinary, the transdisciplinary platform, which was mentioned by Mr. Mishka Jaffrey. So it would be a little bit introduction about that. So in the last two years, we have COVID. So how many people think that what was the major benefit of COVID? Anyone? Sorry? Online yes, the online lectures. So in 2020, when we are uh, facing a COVID, so what we have introduced by someone that there's an online course, which was uh, introduced by Rios Contra Center, termed as RCC, and its curriculum was IMRT 2.0. So what is Ross Contra Center? It's the Spanish in Spanish, which means the race against cancer. It is based in US and it was founded in 2018. Uh, it's an NGO. And what are their mission? They are doing the sessions for the all oncologists, for the radiotherapists and the medical physicists, depending on with the related with the radiation oncology and the radiotherapy. Their program includes the education, trainings, also the clinical development, research, and consulting in radiotherapy only not the other disciplines. The, there is a list of programs like they are focusing on SRS, SR, SBRD curriculum, then they have the HGR brachytherapy curriculum and their program and online program is uh, right now, today's they have the four lectures, the ongoing session. Then they have the IMRT 2.0 curriculum, which is basically for the physicists and then they have also the IMRT for radiation therapists. Uh, I'm sure that there are some of the RTTs sitting over here. So it would be beneficial for them if they will be enrolled with the RCCs for this program. Then they have the head and neck contouring and plan uh, evaluation for the oncologists or the residents. So it will empower them regarding the contouring. And also they are focusing on 2D and 3D external beam radiotherapy. The RCC MRT 2.0 curriculum, which was starting, uh, was started in October 13, 2020 and finished on January 7, 21. It was a 17 hours curated hours with the live online sessions. Uh, uh, approximately, it was a weekly session, sometimes for the bi weekly sessions. And the topics that were covered were regarding the IMRT, along with the VMET and their techniques, and the uh, commissioning QA simulation, motion management. And the best part was for as a physicist, but I believe this was a controlling for the oncologist. So it was a very best part, also for the medical physicist. And the, some of the treatment algorithms were discussed in that. So how many of you are familiar with the volume, volumetric modulated arc therapy? Yes, what's that? Although the definition is mentioned, but what do you know about the VMAC? Okay, so the basic definition regarding the VMAC is mentioned, well, it's a new type of IMRT. Basically, it's just an IMRT with the three parameters which are changing simultaneously. The one is the gantry speed, another is the dose rate, and the third one is the leaf speed. So this is the simplest definition of the VMAT. History, it was initially termed as IMAT, Intensity Modulated Arc Therapy, which was introduced in 1995. And the first paper was published regarding the 1995, where they described it's IMAT. What was the difference? The difference was regarding the dose rate. Also the gantry speed and the MLC motion was there, but the dose rate was not in uh, that era from the 1995 to 2007. Then till 2007, it was termed as a first generation. But from since the 2007, we have this next generation where we have the plans using the inverse treatment planning algorithm and the dose rate varies with the motion of the gant. The term VMAT was introduced by, although it was uh, labeled by a vendor, the we met. It was not termed as a treatment technique. It was introduced by the vendor base. So what were the objective by Mr. Carl Otto in 2007 to create an optimization and delivery platform that should be time efficient, 
and capable of producing the high conformal dose distribution with the arc rotations and the improved accuracy of different beam angles. Although when we were initially, when there was a uh, IMRT was introduced, so it was taking a lot of time for making the plans. We have not seen, but we have also family with the, our, you can say that the old people that they were saying it took around four to five days, around or two to three days for the planning. So the ideas we met was to just cover throughput and introduce a system which can be more fast from the uh, IMRT systems. My presentation is a VMAT of head and neck. So why I have selected the head and neck patient because it is uh, typically described by it as a hard case. There are a lot of number of structures in it, including the OARs. And then it's a, sometimes, according to the oncologists, they thought that there is a complexity in the PTV generations. And there's a lot of changing during the treatment when we are treating the patient with the uh, radiotherapy, not with the VIMPA. Also, if you are treating with the 3D or not with the IMRT or VMAT, then you can see that there's a lot of changing in the patient's anatomical sites. So further, uh, my presentation is regarding the VMAT optimization method. It is distributed in the four parts. The first one is the contouring for medical physicist, then the arc arrangement, and the optimization process, and then the last is the plan evaluation. Contouring is basically what we thought is that it's the only part of oncologist. Are there any residents or oncologists sitting over here? Yes, then you should be happy that the next slide is for the contouring for medical physicists. So contouring is very much important because contours are directly used by the inverse treatment planning algorithms. If the target is near to, if the OARs or any structures near to the target, then it is, should be, the contour should be the perfect. But there's a little bit margin or you can be relaxed if the OAR or any other structure is away from the uh, target. Then it's very much important to do a normal restriction in the vicinity of PTV, which are mostly not in 3D CRT or in the 2D. Like many of the people or the oncologists are there just from that if the, we can only draw the contours, or just the normal organs like you can draw the eyes or you can forget about the lenses, but you have to contour each and every OAR if you're doing with the planning with the VMAT or the IMRT. It is also helpful by contouring. It is also helpful when you are defining the optimization algorithms. So my dear medical physicist, so hold your heart because it is a medical physics contours. Don't be afraid. And we are with the oncologists in that part. So what is the medical phase control? The planner often defines the additional structures, like we have the targets and the OARs, but for the optimizations, we have some additional structures for that, which are used in optimization. These are termed as the medical physics contours. The optimization only structures are the expansions of OARs and possibly the sum of the contributions of the two OARs or the minus structures from the PTVs. Then in the light, it is also helpful in the application of different prescription doses and the constraints when you are uh, entering the optimization window. In support of medical physics contours, these are the, some of the guidelines by RTOG, Energy Oncology, and uh, in the last uh, AAPM 263 reports, which define the medical physics contours as well. So what are the contourings? The OAR plus margin is the contour which is needed for the optimization. For example, if you are dealing with optic chasm, brain stem, lenses, cochlea, there should be three meter. I'm sorry, it's written three meter. It's not three meters, it's three millimeter margin for the PRV's contours. But if you're doing a spinal cord, the, for a spinal cord PRV, there should be the margin of five millimeter around the spinal cord. It could be termed as a spinal cord PRV. Then according to the double APM TG263, what we saw in Eclipse that we have the, all the OARs listed with the alphabetical orders. So there should be a lot of OARs. So what you can do, you can add the Z number before the OARs, the additional OARs, so that it can be listed below. It would be helpful for you during the optimization techniques. Like some of the examples, I said, Z brainstem underscore three millimeter, Z spinal cord underscore five millimeter, or the Z PTV underscore op x one. This is just an example of the PRV. The internal yellow line is the, just the brainstem, and the outer line is for the brainstem PRV, which is controlled with the three millimeter margin. 
So what are the optimization only structures when we enter in the optimization window? So we have the, some of the structures like PTVs. Then we have the OAR contours, which are defined by the oncologist. Then we have the support structures and external which are on need. Like sometimes when we are doing the optimization, we need that there should not be dose in that slice or there should be some dose in that area. So we define over there. Then we have the overlapping PT or normal structures. Like if we have the tumor, which is involved in the brain strength. So what we will introduce some of the optimization other structures. Then we have rings and edges, which will be defined later. <clears throat> this is the example of the PTV minus OAR. The green line over here, I think it is visible for all of you. The green, the red line, which is involved in the brain strength is the simple PTV. But the green line, which is the PTV, minus brainstem and it is used in the optimization. What's the purpose? Because it would be helpful in uh, limiting the dose in the brainstem area, or it will only focus in the optimization in the main target, which is uh, control. Then we have the rings. What are the rings? Rings are just the bands around PTV. These are thickness of rings around one centimeter, and these are three millimeter away from the bar. The role of rings is to just limit the dose in the normal organ surrounding the PTV. It will control the dose fall off by following the roof of 5% per millimeter dose fall off. That is, after the 3 millimeter, you should have the uh, constraints of 85 millimeter thick, uh, of the dose, prescribed dose. If we draw the rings inside the PTV, they are termed as edges. In many cases, when we are optimizing the structures for the IMRT and PMAT, but we see that there are some of the dose limitation, we can't achieve the doses. So we introduce addition or addition structure over there to cover that dose area. The it should be around the maximum range. It, you can define it around five millimeter of the band inside the PTV, termed as the edge. By introducing more tight constraints in the optimization algorithm, we can miss the corners area also. So we also draw the corners at wherever you need it. It's not the fix that we have to draw. It's just an example in the yellow curves, uh, highlighting the PTV. So you can draw anywhere you are. You, you can see uh, you if you are feeling that there should be dose. So you can introduce a corner structure, and uh, in the optimization window, you uh, use the constraints for that. Then we have the hot spot. If you are seeing that the hot spot is causing a range, introduce the area over there and use in the optimization by using constraints. Then if the region is feeling a cold spot, uh, PTV is not dissolving your prescribed dose, introduce the cold spot region and optimize, so go into the optimization. Beam R arrangement, it is very much uh, important for the planning. You have to arrange the beams regarding the anatomical site. It's not that if you are treating a pelvis patient, so make a 360 degree R. If you're doing the head and neck and eyes are over there, lenses are over there, so use a 360 R. Select arts which are useful in uh, optimization algorithm. And sometimes we have the shoulders over here. So we have the very thick area over here. So be aware of that. You have to introduce the arcs or you have to use the avoiding structure so that you cannot treat that region or your arc should be limited over there. The number of arcs are dependent on the your PTV size and also the PTV location and also the how you can save away arcs. It also depends on the number of arcs. If you're treating the head and neck or the brain, so please avoid using from the eyes or lenses, use the alternate systems or non coplanar arts for that. If you are using the two arts with the same gantry angles, one is with a clockwise direction, or it's moving from 181 to 179 degree or with the 179 degree to 180 degree. So do not use the recommendations that do not use the same calling meter because it would not help the fluence to generate. Normally in Eclipse, we have the arc optimization process of using a 30 degree and 330 degree collimator angle, but it's not the mandatory. You can select your collimator angle by seeing your PTV, uh, your contours. Avoid shoulders and algorithm. It would really be helpful. And the possible two arc arrangement for that is that it is just shown in the figure. This is just an example. In picture A, we have two full arcs and the partial arcs depending on the PTV. Then we have the two partial arcs depending on the tumor size and location. And in the last, we can treat the patient with the optimized with the two full arcs. 
Then the optimization process, start your optimization process by defining the NTO. NTO is a tool which is used in inverse planning to reduce a dose spreading around the uh, surrounding tissues. You can use just the optima opt automatic NTO or manual. It's a, it is a window from taken from the Eclipse system. The priority of the uh, NTO is should be more than PTV or the other OAR constraints. Then in optimization process, the PTV lower limits and upper limits are defined. So what are the recommendation according to that course is that if you should introduce hundred percent of the PTV receives hundred percent of the prescribed dose and the other lower limit should be 95% of the PTV receive 98% of the prescribed dose. You can vary according to your practice or experience. Then your up, upper limit should be 0% of maximum PTV receives 107% of the prescribed dose. If you are dealing the hot spot around 107%, and the 2% of the maximum uh, PTV is 1 of 5% of prescribed dose. Initially, you should have the priority of the 100. Start the optimization by first defining the NTOs and for the PTV. Initially, you don't have to define the OARs at the initial step, although in during the optimization process, you can add the uh, OARs priorities. Then introduce the ring and use the priority of 75%. Uh, 75 with the maximum dose limit of 85 percent now you can see that if you have the window where you can see that the, you can see isodose curve so please also optimization algorithm and then introduce the oars uh, constraints <coughs> at one time only introduce one OAR. it would helpful the system to optimize it to optimize it uh, then add upper and mean objectives according to the demand Initially, use your priority with the 50 and with the demand, you can, if you see that there's a more limited or you can more tight the uh, your PT or there's limitations, so you can tie your constraints. Then we have the OARs and other for the, until the step MR2 level, MR2 is um, the resolution level where you can define your optimization processes. This is a window in our Eclipse system where we have the optimization process. If I think it is clear, then be the upper limit, the red ones is for the PTV, where we have behind the four limits to open the two levels, and other OARs are defined over here. And this is the whole window where we see that the where is the our dose is going. So what we do, we use the pause button and introduce the OARs during the optimization process. This whole process was defined in the RCC IMRT 2.0 curriculum by Mr. Adam Schulman. He's a clinical medical physicist at the USA, and he has introduced this matter as a Schulman method. After the optimization, you have you feel that your plan is very good. Then you have the plan evaluation. You may have different criteria for plan evaluation. So, but the general criteria is the same: that maximum tumor control uh, probability (TCP) with the NTCP. We have to see the target coverage. Your target should be according to your defined uh, range. OERs, dose evaluation, uh, evaluation criteria should be defined by your institute. I think then you like the contact model. Trying to meet your constant defined during optimization, you can have the spillage of dose around the surrounding uh, areas. So you have to inspect them uh, carefully and also the PTV, the coverage of the PT also. This is example of the shoulder avoidance that you have to draw the avoidance for the shoulders and uh, introduce the priority. And in the second picture on the right side, we have the neck avoidance. If you're using with a VMAT or the two complete arcs, then introduce the constraints for the neck avoidance. So in the last, contouring is very much important. Also, you have to empower your doctors, your residents, your oncologists to please be aware of the contouring and contour a very good PTV or what are the OARs. Be aware while creating the optimization structures. You have to also be for the medical, so you have to be also be uh, in a good position. Any type of beam arrangement would create a decent plan, but good selection will support the inverse planning algorithm to achieve a near perfect one. Rings along with the NTO. If you're introducing both rings and NTO, so it would be helpful in the control of the dose spillage. And in the last, in the plan evaluation, we have the modulation factor, which is the number of MUs over the prescribed dose. Try to keep them as low as possible. Uh, there are different ranges refined by the different uh, in the 
weeks uh, in the research papers, but try to keep them as low as possible for the modulation factors. This is the whole, uh, whole optimization process, which were defined in the IM 2.0 curriculum for the VMAC. And in the last, I will introduce uh, MPTP, Medical Physicist Transit Discipline Platform. It was also, you can say that the, one of the benefits of the COVID online system. So a person thought regarding this, uh, we, how we can educate the, our community regarding the medical physicists. So we should be introduce a platform where we can uh, introduce uh, gift sessions, uh, the online sessions from the worldwide uh, physicists are working over there. Uh, like the Mr. Mishkat Jaffrey has introduced it in his presentation about the MPTP. So till now, since January 22, we have these sessions. This are, these are the list of the sessions. We have the webinar introduced in January 14, February for the biology. The speaker was international Mr. Muhammad Ali Shah from USA. He presented over there. Then we have the planning review meeting where we have discussed a case of the VMAT breast cancer and there was an expert, expert panel in that. Then uh, we have webinar academic hour regarding the radiology. So it is a transdisciplinary platform where we are focusing all of the disciplines of these medical fields, including radiotherapy, nuclear medicine, and radiology. And the today's workshop, I am very thankful to the organizing team of the Zaudin Cancer Hospital uh, to force uh, giving the opportunity to present over here. And in the last, the upcoming webinars on the first March, we have the Gamma Knife Planning and Small Pedo Symmetry webinar. And the timetable for the March is enlisted over here. So you can see it is for all of us to come ahead. It's just like the, you can hear the ringtone. Okay, Corona ki vaccine aapne lagwa li hai. So jino ne nahi lagwa hai, wo isko attend kare. Jo lagwa rahe hai, wo isko booster samjhe. Aur isko apna refresher samajhte jahe aur attend kare. So attend it, come forward, present it. It is for all of us. And hopefully, at the time, we will be able to hurt who is involved over. Thank you so much. Any question? Uh, I am at the MP both are very good. I am at the MP playing both are very good. But uh, what is the difference from uh, the default or uh, You can, it depends on your experience. You can use the both techniques, the IMRT and the VMAT. It's not that if you have the small tumor, so often you have to treat the IMRT. You have to depend on your experience. You have to have the technology you have available. You have to utilize it. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank these are the patients all related with the patient with classic QAs. Like what we are doing, we have the Octavius, although it is not in function right now. So what we are doing, a patient specific QA plan during the PDIP, total dosimetry image prediction. So we have that model along with the base QR quality assurance protocols, and we are verifying the plans with the PDI. Yeah. Anything which has mentioned the word auto, you have to use it and then you have to verify it. So you have double responsibility. First, you have to use it. Second responsibility, you have to verify it. So if you think you are smart enough, then use the auto segmentation method. This is my comment. Any more question? Thank you.
on a lighter mood, I would like to call Dr. Kurundalan Patar. She has to say 